How's it going guys? Edgar here with Yugi Knights of the Round and today I am bringing you my Nordic budget deck. Um, it, it's somewhat budget like I've explained uh, at the other deck profiles that I'm doing. The Legendary Hero deck box came out not too long ago. It comes with three structured decks of the Phantom Knights, Destiny Heroes, and Nordics. So now I'm doing the Nordic structure deck that I made out of three of these Nordic structure decks, which you can get by either buying three of these boxes, or if you want, you can go to TCG or eBay and you can buy them individually. They're like 11 to 12 bucks. So you can pick up three of them or like one, one of those boxes and two more of those, and then you can make this structure deck. Now, um, keep that in mind, every card that I use in this deck comes from those three structure decks. You can probably take cards from the others, other two structure decks to make this deck a little bit better, but I just focus on those main three. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the deck profile. Yeah. Okay, starting off, we're gonna run three of this goat. <laughs> I am not even gonna bother with these names. They are really hard to say. Um, let's see. It is Tan Grinsnir of the Nordic Beasts. He's a level three. If this card is destroyed by a battle and switch to the graveyard, special summon two Nordic Beast tokens, both of them level three on the field. So he's gonna get you your tokens, which you're gonna use for a lot of your synchros. That's why you run three of them. You're always gonna put them like face down. Hopefully they don't have piercing. But you know, if he gets destroyed, even it just has to be by battle. So you could have have him suicide, crash into something else, to bring out your tokens. So we run three of them. It's gonna be a little bit of defense. Then we run two. Tang Joyster of the Nordic Beasts. Um, when you. When a monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. Once per turn, when a defense special monster card on the field is changed to face up attack position, you can switch to one Nordic Beast monster from your deck in defense position, except for tons short Nordic Beast. So that's the combo practically. Um, you have him, uh, the white goat, he's gonna get destroyed, then you get to summon the black goat. Again, I'm, I'm not gonna put effort into these names, guys. It's already embarrassing enough. But two of him. We're also going to run two Gubdo for the Nordic Beasts. Uh, I don't really see like using it as effect that much because a lot of people don't play Synchros anymore. I mean, but if you're lucky, if they do summon a Synchro, you can use his effect to special summon him. But we really need him because he is the Nordic Beast tuner and you need him to summon Thor. Then you're going to run two, or yeah, two Diverk of the Nordic Alpha. Uh, he's pretty cool. After you normal summon this card, you can normal summon one Nordic monster during your main phase this turn in addition to your uh, your normal summon. You can only use gain the effect once per turn. If the face of card in the field is sent to the graveyard, target one Nordic red card in your graveyard and to your hand. So he gives you an additional normal summon. So you summon him and then you have more monster on the field hopefully. You can go ahead and synchro because he is uh, not a tuner. My mistake, I thought he was the tuner one. But just extra tuna fodder I guess. Next we run two Lysophos Lash Shelf of the Nordic Alphar. When this card is normal summon, you can target one face up monster you control, except the, this card, and special summon one Nordic monster from your hand with a level less than or equal to that face up monster on this level. So summon him, pick another monster if you have the equal or level two. So if you have a level four monster, you can practically special summon any other monster that's in your hand. So you can run two of him. Next, um, probably, the, in my opinion, the best one. She's, see, I thought they were all tuners. I guess he's just the only tuner. Mara of the Nordic Alphar. Uh, he's a level 2 tuner. When this card is used, when using this card as a synchro material, the other synchro materials must be two Nordic monsters in your hand. So you can summon him and use your hand to go for the synchro. So you have him and two level 8s. Synchro, that's 10. So I think that's really cool. That's why I run three now. I think he's probably your best tuner. Next, you're gonna run two. The Nandis of the Nordic Ascent. For a synchro summon, you can substitute this card for any one Nordic tuner. If this card is used as a synchro material, all other synchro materials must be Nordic monsters. Once per turn, you can send one Nordic monster from your deck to the graveyard. This card's level becomes the level of that monster until the end of this turn. So that's pretty powerful. She can substitute to be a Nordic. Uh, sync a uh, tuner and then she can change her level so that's why we run two of her next just because you need more level four monsters gummer of the nordic beasts that this effect's not too special in my opinion but again like i said we just need some level fours if this card battles a level four lower monster after damage cushion you can turn that monster to the hand so that's pretty neat and then we're gonna run two valkyries 
pretty important. This card is not treated as a Valkyrie card, so you can't use it with the Valkyrie Architect. When this card is normal summon, if your opponent controls a monster while you control no other monsters, you can banish two Nordic monsters from your hand and special them two Ifnir tokens. Their war, uh, their warrior earth level four, so that's important, and defense position. So you do that, bring out four, two level fours, that's eight, and her, she's two, that's ten. Bring out your uh, your higher synchros. Because all your synchros in this deck are going to be rank, uh, level tens. Next, your beat stick for your monsters. It's tier of the Nordic champions. Your opponent monsters cannot target Nordic monsters for attacks except for tier. If this if there is no other Nordic monster on the field, destroy this card. So that's the only drawback. Since he's 2,000 attack and 2,000 defense, he requires another Nordic monster on the field. So hopefully that shouldn't be a problem. That's why I only went two and not three, because you know you don't want him to be dead in your hand. Next is Memer. <laughs> he plays he 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 just shows you all these dank memes. That was a really bad joke. <laughs> but uh, once per turn at the end, at the start of your standby phase, if you control a, a Nordic monster and this card's in your graveyard, you can send one spell from your hand to the graveyard and special summon this card. So kind of, if you need more synchro fodder, discard your spells, bring them back. Next, onto our spells, we're gonna run two Nordic Relic Drumpanir. Equip only to an Azir or a Nordic monster, it gains an attack. If this face of card in the field is destroyed by a card effect, you can add one Nordic Relic card from your deck to your hand. So it just helps your monsters. So as you may have noticed, a lot of your monsters are really weak. One Dark Coal, Ultra Rare, it's kind of cool. Monster Reborn, Soul Charge, more Revival. Hey, True Nade, you know, get rid of that back row. Mystical Space, get rid of more back row. And then we're going to have Forbidden Chalice, Forbidden Lance, and Forbidden Dress. So unfortunately, Forbidden Scripture was not in that starter deck, but oh well. You know, you get these three. They're pretty powerful. Onto our traps, we're going to run three Gilfin Feathers of Ferdinand. Uh, it's simple. Add one Orc monster from your deck to your hand. So it's your searcher. Really powerful. That's why you run three. Uh, and then three Nordic Relic of Mjengjor. Pretty much, this is uh, like... Um, Target one Azir and one Nordic monster you control, its attack and defense become double its original attack until the end of this turn, but it cannot attack your opponents directly this turn. So that doesn't mind. Uh, if you have like Odin, Odin's a 4,000 attack, activate this, Odin becomes 8,000. He can trample whatever your opponent has, and if they're in that position, you're gonna do a lot of damage. So this is really important. I mean, if you wanna go for that one turn kill, one order relic of Brig Brigandman. Target one face-up monster you control and one face-up monster your opponent controls. An attack of the first target becomes equal to the original attack of the second target until the end of this turn. So if your opponent tries to run over one of your monsters, you can make them equal attack and they can clash. And then two Nordic Relic Eleventer. This card's really annoying. I hate facing it pretty much. Uh, if your opponent destroys one of your monsters, you activate this. And then you can destroy the monster to destroy your monster. So you destroy your opponent's monster and your opponent cannot do anything to activate this. So they, they can't stop it. Okay, moving on to the extra deck. We're going to run three Goldvik of the Nordic Ascendant. This is the Link monster that comes in that uh, legendary deck hero. So it's really powerful. It's If you can get it. If you can get this combo to work, if you can summon her and meet the requirements, it's really powerful. Uh, it needs one level five or lower Nordic monster. It's a Link one. If this card's Link Summon, you can banish up to three cards from your hand or field, and if you do, Special Summon that many Nordic monsters from your deck in defense position. Also, for the rest of this turn, you cannot Special Summon monsters as Azir monsters, nor Normal Summons at any monsters. You can only use the effect of Gilmveg of the Nordic Ascendant once per turn. While this card points to an Azir monster, your opponent cannot target that monster with card effects. Also, most of your opponent controls cannot target this card before attacks. So, that's really cool. She can help you get pretty much your three bosses out, or one of them out at a time. Uh, we're going to Ascension of the Sky Dragon, he's just a level 10 synchro monster, so if you don't want to summon any of your Zeers, you can just bring him, he's pretty cool. One tuner and one non-tuner, he's all rank, I mean level 10 of this card synchro summon, it gains an inner attack for each card currently in your hand, so he's a little weaker version of Slifer. When this card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to the graveyard. If all monsters that were used for the synchro summon of this card are in your graveyard, um, uh, you can special summon all of them, but their effects are negated. You can only use the effect of Session Sky Dragon once per turn. That's pretty cool. So, 
So you summon Sky Dragon, he gets destroyed, and if all those monsters are still in your graveyard, you can bring them all back and you can synchro them again. That's pretty cool. Next, you're gonna run uh, Triple Coral Dragon. Um, because he's one of the only few level sixes in your hand, and in case you pull like the the rank two and a level four, it's like he's the only level six. Actually, now I'm thinking about it. Uh, once per turn, you can discard one card, then target one card your opponent controls, destroy it. And if you and if this synchro seven card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can draw one card. You can use the effect of Coral Dragon once per turn. But he's a level six, so you know, get two level twos, you can still go into a level ten. Next is two Basils, Basil Diabolic Dragon, Diabolic Dragon. These names are so hard to say, guys. One Dark Tuner, which you have one, cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. If you take damage from an attack involving this card or opponent's card, the card gains attack equal to the damage you took. So, pretty cool. And then we have this Pokemon Evolution of Basils. This one's a level 10, one dark tuner and two non-tuner monsters. Cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Other monsters you you control cannot attack. Once per turn, you target one monster your opponent controls. Any battle damage your opponent takes from attacks involving this card. This turn is halved. Also change that attack monster to zero. And if you do gain life points equal to its original attack. So that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, one scrap dragon. He's a level 8. Once per turn, you can target one card you control and one card your opponent controls. Destroy them. When this card is in your possession, it is destroyed by your opponent's card effect and sent to the graveyard. Target one secret scrap monster in your graveyard and special summon that target non secret mistake. But you have none, so you just kind of want that for that board removal. Next, two Odins. I think Odin is probably the best one out of all the god cards, out of the synchro god cards. Wooden Nordic Ascended Tuner and two non tuners. Once per turn, you can make this card be unaffected by spell and trap effects until the end of this turn. Once per turn, during the end phase of a face-up card you control was destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to the graveyard this turn. You can banish one Nordic Ascended Tuner from your graveyard and special summon this card. When summoned this way, you can draw one card. So, he's very powerful. Next is Loki. Loki of the Azir. One Nordic Alphar tuner and two non-tuners. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a spell or trap card during your opponent but during your battle phase, with effect, you can negate the activation and if you do, destroy it. Once per turn during the end phase, if this face-up card you control was destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to the graveyard this turn, you can banish one Nordic Alphar tuner from your graveyard and switch on this card. So this way you can target one trap card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. So yeah, but he's the god of mischief. From the Marvel movies. And then. Thor, Lord of the Azir. One Nordic Beast tuner and two non tuner monsters. Once per turn, you can negate the effects of all phase of monster your opponent controls until the end of the turn. Once per turn during the end phase, if this face up card you control it was destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to the graveyard, you can banish one Nordic Beast tuner from your graveyard and special summon this card. And if summoned this way, inflict a hand damage to your opponent. So, yeah, not the coolest one. That's why I run Odin. Odin's the best one. So I've been two of them, bam. But thank you for watching the video, guys. Make sure to leave a comment, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't like it. And I'm sorry that I slaughtered and butchered all these names. They were really hard, and you may have noticed I can't read. So <laughs> make sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys later.